Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program and Happy New Year. We're now in our 27th year of continuous broadcast. And to start off the year, we thought we'd bring in some powerful guests to talk about one of the most important things happening in the world, and that's inflation and what it means for real estate investors. Today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. If you've been listening to the Real Estate Guys for a while, then you've heard about the legendary Investor Summit. Simply put, it's the highest level event we do, and the content, faculty, and attendees are amazing. If you're serious about taking your real estate investing to the next level, then join us next summer. You'll spend an entire week with like-minded investors, world-class educators, and real-world professionals, and you'll have a blast. It all begins June 6, 2023 in Ambergris Key, Belize. Visit realestateguysradio.com and click on the tab that says Summit to learn more and reserve your spot. We'll spend a sun-drenched week learning and networking with more than 25 class sessions and breakouts, plus small format roundtable discussions, great dinner conversations, and a ton of fun. It's nearly 70% full already, but there's room for you if you go to realestateguysradio.com and click Summit and make plans to spend a week with the Real Estate Guys and an all-star faculty on the 21st Annual Investor Summit on Sand. Welcome to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Joining me as usual, our co-host, financial strategist, Russell Gray. Hey, Robert. Happy New Year. A brand new year is upon us. It's a clean slate, and we've got so much to look forward to. This will be an interesting year by all accounts. Many times at the beginning of the year, we do a predictions panel, and we're actually talking to some folks about that. But everybody's coming from this really interesting place. The last three years have been just abnormal in so many ways. And that's a bigger topic than we have time for today. But we thought of all the things that really affect people on the street level, one of the manifestations in the last couple of years has been inflation. Now, we've always had inflation. And in fact, our book, Equity Happens, is built on the principle that prices inflate. That's what happens. But what's happened in the last couple of years has been extraordinary. It's not been typical inflation. And I think it's a topic worthy of discussion and especially important for real estate investors. Well, there's two parts to it. There's, first of all, just understanding how and why it happens. You have to understand the mechanics of it. And the reason that is, is because the sooner you can see the storm clouds forming or the change, uh, the shift in the winds, if you will, if you can see that, then you can set your sail. You can navigate through what you expect to have happen. Uh, the system has baked in the cake inflation, and that's not just conspiracy theory. That's not just my opinion. The Federal Reserve has right on their site their mandate being 2% inflation. That's their target. Their goal is to dilute your purchasing power by 2% every year consistently, year over year. And they have whatever they think their reasons are for that. I'm not going to try to get inside the mind of the Federal Reserve and why they do what they do in terms of monetary policy. But monetary policy pivots along with fiscal policy, which is what the government chooses to do. How much money do they borrow? How much money do they spend and put into circulation? And what is the trickle-down effect of all of that on Main Street? Of course, as Main Street investors, we're very concerned about the cost of money, which is interest rates. We're concerned about the health of credit markets, which is the availability of of money to borrow, which pivots off of interest rates. In other words, credit markets are healthy or unhealthy based on interest rate movements. We've talked about that on this show for a long, long time because this is the first time for a lot of us that we're seeing a very serious increase in interest rates after 40 years of a steady decrease. And so that is a major sea change. And so you've got that going on and then layered on top of all of that, you have what's going on in terms of the supply chain and the supply and demand dynamic. And when you get down to Main Street, our tenants are, are suffering from higher cost of living without any offsetting benefit in their investment portfolio because they don't have one. They don't own real estate. They don't own stocks. All they get is a paycheck that doesn't go as far every month as the purchasing power of the dollar continues to degrade through inflation. Well, and it's exactly what has happened forever. And it's why renters have a challenge because they have to out earn their current standard of living or they slip backwards. And it's been like that since 
the dawn of time. One of the great benefits of real estate is it hedges and it works with inflation. Equity happens over time. And if you own real estate, you are in a much better position than if you don't. And it's not just real estate. There's other assets as well. The big change is just the sheer amount of inflation, the reasons for it. And one of our guests will get into that in a little more detail today. But I think that where it lands on our plates as real estate investors is, yeah, real estate is going up in value if you say value is price, but I would say those are two different things. So if prices are up, but rents are up, and then now with interest rates going up, that's having a negative effect on pricing. And yet still we have inflation at the grocery store, at the gas pump, and so on. So it's going to be incumbent to real estate investors to understand, like you say, the mechanics of it. So when we think about inflation, we think about the natural cost to do business goes up over time. And frankly, even though the Fed's mandate is 2%, at 2% a year, we don't feel it that much. This is the insidious nature of inflation. It's that hidden tax. It's not a real tax. In other words, Congress didn't decide they're going to tax us in some new way, but it really does erode our purchasing power. Investors can get on the right side of that. We can make sure that our portfolios are set up so that we are the beneficiaries of inflation. But there's more to it than just buying real estate and hoping. Well, it goes back to this idea that the real value of real estate is based on the income. And the income is a derivative of the rents, obviously. And the rents are a derivative of wages and real wages have been falling. In other words, people's paychecks have been going up nominally by the number, but in terms of how far that paycheck will go in purchasing, it's been going down. So people in real terms are getting poorer. And as that occurs, that is going to have an impact on the rents and the ability of tenants to absorb rents. The flip side of that is inflation also makes it very difficult for builders to build. And so we've seen some of that as we've interviewed various builders that have put projects on hold, that have delayed what they're doing, that have rethought their pricing models, and, and they've been struggling to bring new product out of the ground. Well, of course, that brings supply down. And so you have this very unhealthy supply and demand dynamic. At the same time, you've got this monetary inflation where the purchasing power of the dollar is going down, and it isn't due to productivity. You don't have a lot of productivity. You have less productivity. We're producing less energy. Uh, our manufacturing is down. The last index that came out showed that it's down. We are creating jobs, but a lot of those are in the service sector, and a lot of those are still recovery jobs, jobs that are coming back from the COVID lockdowns, and a lot of businesses that failed in the retail and the hospitality side that are coming back online. So you really can't look at this economy and say that inflation is a byproduct of a robust economy. And yet you've got a Federal Reserve that is trying to slow the economy down. I think it behooves everybody, but especially investors and real estate investors in particular, to really do a deep dive and try to understand what is going on. Why is it different this time? Not that it hasn't happened in the past, but it hasn't happened like this in most of our investing lifetimes, because this thing goes back, you know, 40, 50 years, the last time we saw this kind of a dynamic. And, and the question is, is the thing that fixed it last time, which was interest rates over 20 percent, is that what is going to be the cure? Or is something else going to have to come along to fix this thing? Or what's going to break if it can't be fixed? And we don't know. That's why we study it. It's also, I think, important to understand that inflation doesn't just happen in the U.S., right? We have listeners in more than 190 countries, and we occasionally get emails from folks that say, hey, inflation is even worse here. A few that say, hey, it's not as bad here. In fact, our inflation rate, the last published number, was about 7.5%, let's say. And people say, well, that's down. I remember when it was 9% annually. Well, yeah, but 9% is a lot more than 2 and 7% creates all the problems that it has. But in the last 12 months or so, China's inflation has kept near the 2%, Switzerland at 3%, Japan at 37 South Korea, 5.7, Indonesia, 5.7, France, 6.2, etc. So there are definitely places that have kept their inflation rate less than the U.S. At the same time, there are places like 
Mexico at 8.4, Germany at 10.4, the UK at 11.1, Italy at 11.8, and Russia at 12.6, even the Netherlands over 14%. So inflation happens everywhere, and it's a combination of factors, which is why it's hard to get your head around. It's not just that, hey, over time, a cup of coffee costs me more. It's all the things that you talked about, Russ. It is influenced by supply and demand and distribution dynamics. And it's influenced by the part of demand, which is we call capacity to pay. That's being affected greatly because of interest rates. Now, it may not affect whether you can buy an ounce of silver or not, but it is going to affect real estate because real estate is normally financed. So all of that makes for an interesting year to be investing in. To get our minds around this, we like to go out and visit our friends and talk to folks at conferences and conventions. And over the summer, we had a chance to sit down with a couple of gentlemen that uh, really have some wisdom. I was listening to George Gammon uh, a couple of weeks ago, and he was talking about how as much as he loves listening to what the young guys have to say, he gives a lot more reverence to the older folks because they have that not just head knowledge, but seat knowledge. And, you know, we're among the older folks in our space, but all three of our guests today are even older than us. And I think that is wisdom, and we're thrilled to have them with us. Our first guest is a publisher. And by the way, all those statistics I just gave you on inflation come from one of his publications. He's also written a brand new book on inflation. When we come back, you'll meet Steve Forbes today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Live nationwide, you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Find out more at realestateguysradio.com. Real Estate Guys listeners, are you tired of losing real estate deals due to financing issues? Have you had enough of waiting on banks, lenders, and investor groups to fund new projects? What if there were a way to eliminate all the hassle and invest in real estate on your own terms? I'm here to tell you there is. Patrick Donahoe here from Paradigm Life. I'm an Investopedia top 100 most influential financial advisor, and I recently wrote a best-selling book about the financial strategy that changed my entire investment model, and the one that could change yours. To get a copy of my book for free and learn how you can maximize your real estate portfolio by acting as your own bank, send an email to mybank at realestateguysradio.com. Don't make another real estate deal without reading my book first. Email mybank at realestateguysradio.com now to get your copy for free. Hello, this is Robert Kiyosaki. I'm the author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And if you're serious about learning how to invest in real estate, listen to the real estate guys. They really know what they're talking about. Welcome back to the Real Estate Guys radio program. Heard every weekend on this great radio station. Now in our 26th year of broadcast, talking about a big subject today, inflation. And we literally have the man who has just written the book on it. Let's welcome back to the Real Estate Guys radio show, Steve Forbes. Hey, Steve. Good to be with you. Thank you. Yes, good to have you back. And uh, love the new book, Inflation. And there's a lot to talk about here. Everybody has it on their mind. A couple years back, no one pays attention. It's that insidious tax. But now everybody is aware. What's going on? Well, people are feeling the effects of what happens when you have the two different kinds of inflation happening at the same time. The non-monetary kind is when you have an event, say like a drought or a flood or something, or when you shut down the global economy and it, you disrupt these supply chains that are intricate all around the world. It's not like turning on a light switch. And then you have an administration in Washington that is doing its best to hurt commerce, whether it's through regulation, whether it's through going after the oil and gas industry, even though gas in green Europe is seen as a clean fuel, here we're attacking it. So the President of the United States goes down and bend in the sand, ask the Saudis to produce more dirty oil while we have clean oil here. And so why doesn't the President go to Louisiana, Texas, or North Dakota and uh, get production up there? So you have the government fighting supply. Now, if you have more supply, prices come down. Right. So that's one factor. Then the Federal Reserve undermines the integrity and trust in the dollar. Even before COVID, they're printing too much money. Now they've got an overhang of $2 trillion that they borrow each night short term to try to keep an even worse inflation happening. And at the same time, that they are uh, gumming up that, they are trying to suppress the economy because they think they fight inflation by creating more unemployment. That is, uh, and it's sort of true, prices will come down when uh, 
businesses go out of business. But that's not the way you have a healthy economy. But that's the Fed's thing. They try to uh, hurt the economy, make people poor. And I wish somebody would ask the pa Chairman Powell, Jerome Powell, the head of the Federal Reserve, why does making people poor make an economy richer? So there is the non-monetary inflation, right? And that's, that's right. Got to get your mind around that. But then there's also the monetary inflation. That's right, when you undermine the value of the dollar. Then you're printing more dollars, everyone's worth less. And uh, that's what you see happening, not just in the United States, but all around the world. The European Central Bank has been buying bonds. The Japanese are amazing, they're even worse. Their national debt is twice proportionally than the, our own and they're still trying to keep zero interest rates. So they're gonna have a real problem there. You're already starting to see the yen wobble. The euro is wobbling. So we got some real crises brewing out there. And uh, if people wanna go online, they should look up an old comedy series of movies called Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> and, uh, and Hardy would always say to Laurel, this is a fine mess you've gotten us into. <laughs> so the central bankers and our uh, rulers, this is a fine mess you've gotten us into. Now, there are some uh, there are some solutions, but before we get to that, uh, you make a great point about the stability of a unit of measure. And the challenge we have is when what a dollar is worth is changing all the time, you can't rely on it, and it erodes trust. Well, that's right. Imagine trying, everyone knows the importance of fixed weights and measures in the marketplace. When you buy a gallon of gas, the size doesn't change each day. Right. You buy a pound of cheese, that doesn't change each day, 14 ounces, 18 ounces. The size of a ruler doesn't change each day. Imagine building a building if you don't know the size of a foot each day. It makes it a little more difficult. Same is true of money. Money's a way in which we buy and sell with each other. And if that uh, is fluctuating, not only does that mean less commerce, less business, less investing in the future, but also undermines that word you use, social trust. Because if money is stable, then I don't have to know who you are, but we can do intricate uh, buying and selling with each other. It helps people to create all these supply chains, we call them, all around the world that make us all richer when you have these uh, free markets. And then when that trust is uh, eroded, then people, then they start turning on each other. You have the uh, administration. When you have inflation, they always look for scapegoats. You know, in Roman times, they blame Christians. Lions didn't mind, but it certainly didn't uh, help the inflation. In the medieval times, they did witches. Uh, today, it's uh, oil companies, it's meat packers, it's chicken producers, it's uh, truck drivers, it's uh, gas station owners. You know, the gas station owners are all around the country. Hundreds of thousands conspire each night to raise the price of gasoline. <laughs> you know, those, those greedy SOPs. That's who it is. That's I who it knew is. you'd know, Steve. <laughs> Well, you make a great point, and I know you talk about in the book why inflation is bad. That may seem obvious, but long term, right, as we have this long term effect of inflation and the two types of inflation compounding the problem, take us there. Well, it's not just uh, rising prices, it's also uh, undermining that trust, and uh, society turns on each other because you can't trust people anymore. And it's no coincidence, we point out in the book, countries that uh, always undermine their currencies have more violence, more crime than countries that don't. Uh, there was a book that came out years ago called When Money Dies, about the terrible German inflation right. of the early 1920s, destroyed the middle class, made possible the rise of Hitler. And uh, the author of the book, a fellow named Adam Ferguson, makes the point, before that inflation, Germany was a very highly law-abiding a nation. And after, with that inflation, that all went by the boards. The only way he could survive was by cheating. The only way he could get ahead was by speculating. So all the things you were brought up with went by the boards and undermines the whole fabric of society. And let me just give you one statistic in terms of what it costs in terms of a people's standard of living. If we'd maintained our average growth rate that we did for almost 200 years when we had a stable dollar, dollar tied to gold, if we'd maintain that average, the yeah, typical household today would be much richer. Let me just give you a couple of numbers. Yeah. We had a 4% average growth rate after World War II. We went off the gold standard and went down to 2.7. It doesn't sound like much, but you compounded that over 50 years. Today, median household income is $67,000. If we'd maintained our average, typical average for 200 years, that household income today would be $100,000 to $110,000. Wow. Now, don't you think people would be happier if you had a stable dollar and thirty dollars to $40,000 more of income? That's what happens when politicians muck around with the dollar. 
Now you have been a proponent of some really awesome ideas over the years and in the book you talk about what can we do, what can be done about this. So how do we get out of this mess, Steve? Well, one, the government stopped going to war against business, let the economy heal, and if they'd leave it alone, it would. You know, after World War II, we had two years, two and a half years of real instability as we went from a wartime economy to a peacetime economy. You don't go from making bombers to a refrigerators overnight. It right. takes a little bit of time, so they're short. But in a couple of years, we worked our way out of it. They let the economy heal. This government won't let it heal. Let the economy heal. So the non-monetary kind of inflation, we can uh, ameliorate, make less bad. Yeah. And in the Federal Reserve, focus on not trashing the economy, but preserving the integrity of the U.S. dollar. We've done it before. We can do it, uh, do it again. And so it's uh, just going back to tried and true stuff. And unfortunately, the problem is that a lot of people in Washington know that when you have this kind of instability, they see it as more power for themselves. The book is just out, and it's called Inflation, What It Is, Why It's Bad, and How to Fix It. Steve Forbes, always great to see you, my friend. Thanks for being on the program. Very great pleasure. Thank you. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. More when we come back from Freedom Fest. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Need help with your real estate investment portfolio? Check out the resources page at realestateguysradio.com. As I speak, inflation is robbing you at a rate north of 10%. Last year, the number one zip code that Mid-South Homebuyers offered income property to Real Estate Guys listeners in appreciated by 21%. To harness that spread and protect and grow your wealth in the current economic storm, you need the two decades of experience in renovation and management that Mid-South Homebuyers brings to their investors. Every home Mid-South offers you will have brand new components, a new 30-year roof, and a high-quality renter, all in a price range under $150,000. Their empathetic property managers will use your ROI as their North Star, while the lack of repairs on their totally renovated properties contributes to their almost four-year average renter stay and 99% occupancy rate. Learn about their lifetime occupancy guarantee and total one-year maintenance guarantee by emailing midsouth at realestateguysradio.com. That's midsouth at realestateguysradio.com. You'll be glad you did. If you love real estate and have always wanted to own your own business, listen up. The Real Estate Guys and their panel of experts want to teach you how to go full-time fast in the real estate syndication business. These next few years may go down in history as one of the best times ever to acquire investment real estate. There are deals everywhere if you know where to look and how to assemble the resources. The Secrets of Successful Syndication Seminar will show you how to make big money doing big deals from a team of experts that have syndicated projects totaling more than $1 billion. Don't wait for someone to give you a raise or create a job for you. Attend the secrets of successful syndication and learn how to build a team, raise capital, find deals, and make full-time money in six months or less. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. All the big players use syndication as a way to diversify risk, optimize profits, and earn big money. You can too. Go to realestateguysradio.com and click on events. Hello, this is Jim Rogers. We're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program and Happy New Year. Now's the perfect time to get signed up for the 21st Annual Investor Summit on Sand. It takes place in June in beautiful Ambergris Key, Belize. An all-star faculty and amazing attendees. All the details on our website at realestateguysradio.com under Summit. We're talking about inflation and what it means for real estate investors. We just heard from Steve Forbes, got a couple of more great guests coming up. But first, it's time to play real estate trivia, your chance to win a prize by knowing today's real estate trivia question, which of course has something to do with our topic. If you're the first person to get it right, you're gonna get Steve's brand new book, Inflation, autographed by Mr. Forbes. All you need to do is, as soon as you hear the question and think you know the answer, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Give us your name, the answer to the question, and your physical mailing address so we can send you your autographed copy of Inflation by Steve Forbes. 
Last week on the show, we were in Scottsdale, Arizona at the IMN Single Family Forum. With Stephanie Riley and Steph McCom, we asked this, which U.S. state has the tallest people? Well, according to Home Snacks, using data from the CDC, the tallest state for men is Montana, yet Utah is home to the tallest women for 2022. We actually awarded prizes for each answer. By the way, the average height of a male in the United States is 5 foot 9 inches, while the average height for a female is 5 foot 4 inches. In case you were wondering, Hawaii is the U.S. state with the shortest men and women. Here's our real estate trivia question for this week. We mentioned the current inflation rates for lots of places. Which country had the highest inflation for 2022? You have all the countries on earth. Which one had the highest measured inflation last year? If you know or just want to guess, send your best guess to trivia at realestateguysradio.com. Give us your guess, your name, and your physical mailing address. The first person that gets it right gets this brand new book, Inflation, autographed by the author Steve Forbes. That's today's real estate trivia question. Next, we'll hear from the international man and longtime investor, Doug Casey, today on the Real Estate Guys radio program. Hi, guys. My name is George Gammon from the Rebel Capitalist Show, and you are listening to the Real Estate Guys, my favorite podcast when it comes to macroeconomics and real estate investing. Welcome back to the Real Estate Guys radio program. We're in Las Vegas, Nevada at Freedom Fest, and you never know who you're going to run into. Let's welcome back to the Real Estate Guys radio program, our friend, the international man, Doug Casey. Hey, Doug. Thank you, Robert. It's nice to be here with you. Now, it's good to see you. There's so much going on in the world, as there always is. But what do you make of this inflation and craziness and everything going on? Well, it's not transitory, and it's greatly underrated, and it's going to get much, much more serious. The only thing I can really guarantee you is chaos, uh, not just over the next year, but probably over the next decade for a number of reasons. So it's a kind of a grim outlook, but that's nothing new or different for me. I'm, I, I've turned into a perma bear over the last little while. Hard not to. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> well, but I, I'm going to guess that you're a guy that's going to be okay with some chaos. Well, unfortunately, I can't run and dodge as fast as I once could. So... I guess I'm going to be spending more and more time in an undisclosed but safe location surrounded by thousands of acres so I can watch all this stuff on my widescreen as opposed to out my front window. Well, let's talk about that. We had you on the show a few years ago, and we had an awesome conversation about all the places in the world that you've lived. And obviously, you were one of the first guys anyone remembers talking about this idea of moving or living or being a citizen of the world. Yeah. And how does that search happen today? Is there any place that's safe? You know, I went out to dinner last night, night before, with my old friend Jim Rogers. Yeah. And we think very much the same. And like myself, Jimmy's been to, I've been to 155 countries. He's been to at least that many. Yeah. I've lived in 10. And uh, we were commiserating that there is no really safe place in the world today. There's just places that are better than others for the time being. And uh, I spend most of the year in South America these days, a notoriously unstable place. Right. Most of it in Uruguay, where I've got Nastancia, some of it uh, across the river in Argentina. Yeah. So for the moment, Uruguay is pretty good. But anything can change with the next election in these places, as we found here in the United States two years ago, and four years before that, and four years before that. It's, it's unpredictable. And it, it's not just the lunatics that are running the country. It's the culture of countries like the U.S. in particular that are changing pretty radically right before our very eyes. So to answer your question, where to go. Eh, if you're in Europe and you have a lot of money, I'd say that Switzerland remains a pretty good choice. Yeah. 
There's no place in Africa, unless you're young and want to do some political entrepreneuring, which I'm all in favor of. Otherwise, Africa is a forget about it. Uh, where do you go? The world's becoming a small place. And of course, these people, uh, these people they call the globalists, they call themselves the elite, I call them parasites, Yeah. you know, are, are trying to make it an even smaller place. So I, I don't have a definitive answer. I, I think what you've got to do, depending on how much money you have, that's the key. If you don't have any money, well, you may be in trouble. Of course, you can live like Jack Reacher if you're a right. young, fit, muscular guy. You don't need anything. Okay. But most people aren't. So um, if you got some money, you, you really need one, not just one, you need two, or better yet, three places where if the going gets tough, you can get going to them. Now, you've called this a bolt hole for years, right? A place you can go find in the middle of the night if you had to. Yeah. And I think there is some logic in thinking ahead. But at the same time, we have heard good things about Uruguay. Haven't been there yet. I've been to Paraguay, but not to Uruguay yet. Oh, What's that's it like? unusual. I mean, many more people have been to Uruguay. They're very different. Yes. Uruguay is, I would say, the most stable, uh, the most homogeneous uh, country in Latin America. It's uh, very agriculturally oriented, which is good. Yeah. It's got a small population, three and a half million people, which is good. So uh, for the time being, it's uh, a very good choice in Latin America. And there's not too many gringos there, uh, but it has Punta del Este, which is a very jet setty little resort city. Yeah. So it's got some uh, cultural delights. You don't just have to live among the soybeans, although on my farm, I have soybeans and timber and cattle and hogs and, you know, a couple of miles of riverfront and lakes. I got all this stuff. So, But everybody in Uruguay does. Everybody's got an estancia. Well, let's shift gears a little bit and talk about what does an investor do in a climate like this? Because there is this potential of civil unrest every day. And yet... Are there opportunities in the market? Is this a time to be looking for that, or is this a time to hunker down? Well, in the Northern Hemisphere, uh, I have a house, and uh, I think I just about bottom-ticked the, uh, I owned it for cash, but when, real, but when interest rates for long-term mortgages got down around 3% or thereabouts, I got a 30-year fixed mortgage on the place, which as far as I'm concerned is free money because yeah. the dollar is losing value more than 10%, more like 15% a year and going up. And I took the money that the bank was good enough, I'd say stupid enough to give me. <laughs> I mean, I'll give it back to them over 30 years, of course. When it's worth less, yes. Oh, much, much less. <laughs> and I've, I've done intelligent things with it. So uh, that's the way to play real estate with uh, a lot of a lot of low interest rate debt. Of course, interest rates have gone up a lot uh, just in the last six months, but they're going higher, I think. Well, I think so. And, and then, of course, the thing about real estate is if I can borrow at six and make eight or 10, then it, it makes sense. And, and when the currency itself is going down right now, you've got a hedge. Well, you're right. You know, I've never really dabbled in commercial real estate or renting apartments or houses to other people. Because as you know, you can make a lot of money on that stuff, but it's management and aggravation intensive. Oh, yeah. And so you can't kiss all the girls, so I haven't done that. <laughs> now, I know you're a big uh, metals guy, though. I remember hearing you talk about the idea of how the metals fit in a portfolio. Can you speak to that? Yeah, uh, gold and to a lesser degree silver. It's the only financial asset that's not simultaneously somebody else's liability. And it's private and uh, safe. It's money in the most basic form. It's not an investment because uh, it doesn't produce more wealth in itself. It's right. money. $100, a $100 bill doesn't produce more wealth in itself either. So uh, I'm a big believer in accumulating it and not ever selling any unless you have to. Uh, otherwise, I speculate in mining stocks, which are very, very, very volatile. Yeah. And uh, 
I have some marginal interest in uh, some cryptocurrencies, although I think eh, 98% of them are going to zero. Yeah. But I like Bitcoin, especially, let me stick my neck out and say at around $20,000, I think it's a buy. So, but that's just an opinion. Who knows? Well, you're never a guy short of opinions. Hey, speaking of speculation, tell us what's the latest when it comes to this awesome series of books you're writing. Oh. I know it's a lot of it's a lot of work. That's so kind of you to, to so kind of you to ask, Robert. Uh, well, it charts the journey of our hero Charles Knight through life, starting with Speculator, where he goes off to Africa and turns a very small amount of money into a couple hundred million, gets involved in a bush war, and it talks a lot about the art of speculation and Africa and stuff. Then he becomes a drug lord, and uh, I talk about the drug business of all types, legal and illegal. And then uh, has to do two years in prison, and then he becomes an assassin because he figures that there's some people that just need killing. And Assassin's the most recent book, and it's, yeah. I think it's quite a good book. They all are, but they're quite good. And uh, sometime in the next year, I hope we turn out with the next book, Terrorist, where he's accused of being a terrorist. And after that will come Warlord, when he goes back to Africa and finds a shithole country and turns it into Singapore on steroids. And then things get really radical in the next two books. So everybody should go out and buy those books. Absolutely. Well, we're anxious to see where the story goes. It's uh, fascinating how you have tied so many real life lessons into your fiction work. But uh, great to hear from you as always, my friend. There's Doug Casey. Well, I hope we can do this again in person sometime, Robert. Absolutely. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Real estate investment advice right in your mailbox. Sign up for the free Real Estate Guys newsletter at realestateguysradio.com. Hey, ever wished you could go back in time and do some tax planning? Now you can, just like Marty McFly. Lucky for you, a brand new federal law just made this possible with an EQRP to get tax deductions and reduce your taxable income from last year so you can use that tax savings to invest in real estate, Bitcoin, gold, even your own business. Whether you're a full-time investor, doctor, government employee, even if you have five or 50 employees, the EQRP works and is your secret weapon and now it's retroactive. Hey, I'm Damian Lupo and we have your solution. By the way, if you got bad advice and used an IRA for an apartment syndication, you are sitting on a U-bit time bomb. But don't worry, there's a solution, the EQRP. The EQRP company is ready to help you get control of your money, kill U-bit, and help you pay way less taxes. Want to learn more about this strategy? Send an email to EQRP at realestateguysradio.com for my special EQRP report. Paying tax or letting Wall Street suck you dry is dumb. Your first step is freeing your retirement money by sending an email to EQRP at realestateguysradio.com today. Hi, this is Sheriff Mack, and you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. And welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program in Las Vegas, Nevada for Freedom Fest. It's our 10th year. Let's meet a gentleman who's been every year the producer of Freedom Fest, our good friend Mark Skousen. How are you, Dr. Skousen? Yeah, Robert, I'm doing really well. I yeah, bet you absolutely. are. It's been an amazing event. You know, I get, uh, I'm get i on cloud nine uh, after the Saturday, or during the Saturday night banquet because everything's over and everything's working perfectly and everything has run smoothly after all the mistakes and difficulties and stuff and the challenge we had 2600 over 2600 people this wow. time yeah so we were hitting records and uh a great group of uh people and stuff and yeah i'm on cloud nine for about a month after something like this is over with yeah there's so many sessions none of us can hear them all but uh, what were some of your highlights this time around yeah you're right i mean we have a dozen breakout sessions when we do those yeah. and uh, we've even had to split our main stage into two parts People like variety, people like choices, and we always make sure there's a wide variety of choices. I mean, we do philosophy, history, science and technology, politics, healthy living, a financial conference, the Anthem Film Festival. We even added a, a libertarian comedy show yep. uh, on Friday night, which was a big success. So uh, 
but yeah, we had uh, Kennedy from Fox News as our MC the entire she did a time. Great job, yeah. And she is so creative and enthusiastic. Yep. Uh, the audience just loves her. She's just fantastic. And we had Senator Rand Paul and Mike Lee come, the two most libertarian senators. We had uh, John Cleese, the about that? British comedian, who's also talking about the cancel culture. We, we've had Jim Rogers from Singapore. People from all over the world came to this year's Freedom Fest. So, uh, yeah, no, it's been great. John Mackey was here, Steve Forbes, uh, John Fun, Steve Moore. I mean, the list goes on and on. James O'Keefe was, a, you know, a Veritas, um, Project Veritas was very popular, standing room only for his sessions. And my interview with Senator Rand Paul was a real highlight. I showed clips from his encounters with Dr. Fauci and other Biden administration. Uh, we had this big debate on Trump. Was he, uh, should he be the 24 candidate? Was the election stolen? And I brought in a reporter, it was Wayne Root, who is very pro-Trump. And then uh, I brought in this uh, really good objective reporter uh, who made some, I think, some really good points. Uh, his name is Isaac Saul, yeah. and he did a tremendous job as well. So lots of debates, crypto debates. We had had that going on. Uh, I think we covered everything but real estate, so maybe you guys covered that. There you go. A little bit we did, absolutely. Got some good uh, conversations, of course, with We need everyone. to do more on real estate because that's such a uh, big part of people's portfolio. Yeah, more and more. Now, uh, you have been writing your newsletter, Forecast and Strategies, for more than 35 years. 42 and years now. 42 yeah, years? Yeah. Can't, you don't look old enough to be writing a newsletter <laughs> that old. My 42 well, years. My goal is to keep writing to at least 2030, and so I can write a book called 50 Years on Wall Street. Yeah, yeah right on. The idea. Well, hey, uh, one of the things that just happened was the big reveal. We had a great time last year in South Dakota, yeah. back in Las Vegas this year. But last year, you shared with us that it wasn't going to be in Las Vegas every year going forward, and now we can announce next year's event. Yeah, you know, we were in Vegas every year, and even though there were some people who say, you know, we don't like Vegas, other people lo love Vegas, so we decided, well, it's... Let's do both. So we every other year we're in Las Vegas. So last year we were in South Dakota for yep. the first time and we decided this is really good because there are people who really like to go to a different location. So uh, drum roll, it's um, Memphis, Tennessee. Memphis, we're going to. a yeah. great real estate town, by the way. Oh, so really? That's, uh, yeah. that's, Forbes had it on their list as the number one cash flow real estate market a few years back. Wow. And of course, Elvis will be there. So that's yes, going to be awesome. Yes, he will be. Now I... it's going to be the middle of July next year. Yeah. And uh, it's not too early to get signed up. If you are interested in attending Freedom Fest, the real estate guys will be there. Just send an email to freedomfest at realestateguysradio.com. We'll get you all the details. What can you share with us, if anything, about next year? Well, it is the headquarters for FedEx. Yeah. And so we have invited. He hasn't accepted yet, but he's a libertarian. Fred Smith is the CEO and founder of FedEx. Yeah. And he has had a great story to tell, so I'm really hopeful he will welcome us. But we also have Douglas Brinkley, who's America's number one historian, and he's written books on Rosa Parks as well as uh, Ronald Reagan. So um, he, he'll be a really interesting addition. So those are just two of the people. I'm sure we'll have a lot of people who we've heard of in the past, but uh, we're very excited about it. We think it'll be a lot of fun. It's July t uh, 12th through the 15th. Uh, 2023 at uh, Memphis uh, Convention Center. Excellent. Well, congratulations on another great year in the books, and yeah. we'll look forward to next time. There's Mark Skousen, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks, Mark. Thank you. You're tuned to the Real Estate Guys radio program. I'm your host, Robert Helms. Hi, I'm G. Edward Griffin, author of The Creature from Jekyll Island, a second look at the Federal Reserve. And you're listening to The Real Estate Guys. Hi, this is Garrett Sutton, Robert Kiyosaki's asset protection attorney and the author of Loopholes of Real Estate and Start Your Own Corporation. As an American or foreign-based investor in U.S. real estate, you know we are a litigious society. You know that you need to protect your real estate, paper, and bullion holdings with the right mix of LLCs and corporations. Our firm, Corporate Direct, not only forms these entities, but importantly, we properly maintain them too. If you fail to follow the corporate formalities, you can lose it all in an instant. Corporate Direct is your source for LLC protection and maintenance in all 50 states. Visit CorporateDirect.com or call 800-600-1760. 
Mention the Real Estate Guys for a free bonus. That's 800-600-1760 or CorporateDirect.com. We look forward to assisting you at CorporateDirect.com. Hi, I'm Nomi Prinz, author of Collusion. You're listening to The Real Estate Guys. And welcome back to The Real Estate Guys radio program. Thanks for tuning into the show. Is this the year you learn to go bigger, faster? Coming up in March, it is The Secrets of Successful Syndication, an awesome event for you to learn how to leverage your existing relationships, market knowledge, and do bigger deals, or how to passively invest with folks that are doing those bigger deals and getting those economies of scale and exploiting awesome niches. If you want more information, just send an email to syndication at realestateguysradio.com, syndication at realestateguysradio.com. Well, my goodness, great to hear from some of our older friends. Yes, it's incredible to consider how much these guys have seen, how many smart people they've spoken to, how much time they've spent diving deep into how policy, how the macro factors affect marketplaces and portfolios. Of course, they're not real estate investors. We have to take what they say and we have to apply that to what we do. And of course, you know, like for example, we know that as we're sitting here today, the stock market just finished 2022. You take the stock and the bond and commodity markets, I think, and I don't know if it's a commodity markets, but the stock bond markets, you put them together, worst performance like since 1871. Yeah. And you think, well, gosh, where's the inflation, the asset price inflation? So you don't have asset price inflation, even in real estate, you haven't seen asset price inflation, but in terms of consumer prices, you have. And so that's kind of a flip-flop. Well, when you look at one of the big components of consumer price inflation, it's rents. Yeah. And so if you look at that as a real estate investor, you're like, well, that's actually pretty good. And so there, there's sunshine in all of this. And so when you listen to what these guys have to say, and Doug was you know, a little doom and gloom, and he admitted it, but at the same time, He's a guy that understands that this time is not the same as last time. This is different. There aren't as many options. There aren't as many places to go. People, in a lot of ways, are turning and facing. You see politically a lot more pushback on policies that are creating some of the problems. You see a greater interest, and I hope there's young people out there that are listening to this show. And when I say young people, I'm talking millennials and, and younger that have never seen inflation before like this, that have never experienced anything like this before, that don't understand how the policies that get made affect them in the real world. And they're starting to see that. And the stock market isn't something that just goes up forever, and neither does real estate. So you have to know how to adjust what you're doing to what's happening in the world. And the way you get that perspective is by listening to guys like Steve Forbes, Doug Casey, Mark Skousen, who's been running investment conferences, and these guys have been speaking since forever. They're just brilliant, brilliant men. So it's just such an honor that we had a chance to get them on the show. Well, in fact, uh, Doug talked about going to dinner with Jim Rogers. We also had a chance to sit down with Jim Rogers and spend some time. Uh, didn't have time to bring that to you today, but uh, we'll definitely get a conversation with him. Uh, one of the most storied investors out there. And he's even more doom and gloom than Doug is right now. You know, it was interesting. After the interview with Doug, uh, we sat and talked for another 25 minutes. And uh, I was smart enough to record that as well. And I almost thought we could use some of it. It was a very candid, very cool conversation. But where he is in his life, and he alluded to this a little bit, right? When he was a young guy and he wrote International Man, you know, the idea was you could vote with your feet, pop around wherever you want to go, be a nomad. And as he's gotten older, he's like, well, I'm not going to run from anything. Instead, he's, he's hunkering down. But even through all of the negativity, he finds a way. You know, for years, he's talked about this idea of having a bolt hole. Now, there's a second home, and that's great, and having a property maybe in another country and so forth. But specifically, when Doug talks about a bolt hole, it's a place you could bolt to in the middle of the night if you had to. Hopefully, you never have to. But if you did, wouldn't it be nice to have thought of that ahead of time? Les Brown says, it's better to be prepared and not have an opportunity then have an opportunity and not be prepared. Just replace opportunity with crisis. Right, yeah, there you go. And uh, be prepared for a crisis. So I think another thing to be thinking about in this new year is what would your plan be if you had to go somewhere else in the middle of the night? Yeah, we've heard talk about disruptions of supply chains, in particular food. 
that's been an area of concern. Water has been an area of concern. You know, in Arizona in particular, they've gotten this big fight with California about accessing the Colorado River. Now they're talking about putting in desalination plants and piping water in from the ocean and desaling that to create water for the desert here in Arizona. So you look at the way people try to respond to that. You say, well, what could I do on a local level? Well, this time last year, I had a chance to go speak at uh, George Gammon's Rebel Capitalist Live. And I was on a panel with Lynette Zhang and Mike Dillard. And George asked us, what are you doing to prepare? Both of them had purchased ranches out in the country to run away to and get out of the city if everything kind of fell apart. And I asked the crowd, I said, well, how many of you think that's a good idea? Everybody put their hand up. And I said, well, how many of you are a little intimidated by the expense of doing that, having this essentially non-productive asset sitting there like kind of a big what if you know if you got enough money maybe that's worth it and a lot of people go yeah they're i'm very concerned about that and so i propose this idea to them about this idea of of turning it into a productive asset and, and, and co-oping it you know i'm basically if they're explaining them how to syndicate a bolt hole and to turn it into a productive farm or someplace that has water rights, someplace that they could go, but it would be almost like a vacation property. Anyway, so uh, we actually have a friend who's doing that. <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. In yeah, fact, at the yeah, New Orleans it's... Investment Conference, uh, we got a chance to go to dinner and he and his wife, you know, showed me the plan and pictures of the land. And, and I mean, they're really going full boat on this. It's hundreds of acres. It's in a beautiful area, but it's got water, which is critically important. It's got good arable land. And the idea is to have a place that a number of people could go if they had to, but at the same time to be able to have it be productive from a livestock and from a agricultural point of view, but also uh, from an experience point of view. Yeah. A lot of people would like to know how to garden. A lot of people would like to know how to hunt and prep game and can and garden and harvest and do all those kind of things. Well, you know, that could might make kind of a fun little vacation. It's not your run-of-the-mill vacation. You know, you're not going to Disneyland and standing in lines and riding around on rides. You're out there actually experiencing nature uh, under the tutelage of an experienced guide, somebody teaching you how to do these things. But, you know, I mean, you've been in scouting since forever. Your boys are in scouting. I, I didn't scout when I was a kid, and I look back and I watch what you're doing with your sons, Robert, and I think to myself, gosh, I kind of wish I would have done that. You know, all those really boyish experiences. But a, a place like this would give people an opportunity. I call it a dude ranch for not preppers, but people who just want to experience the outdoors in, in kind of a natural way. So anyway, this our, our friend Dave's been putting this thing together, and it's just such an exciting project. It's a power of syndication. It, it allows people who maybe don't have enough money to do something they'd like to have or a way to share the burden of doing something they'd like to do but don't want to do themselves. Give you an example. A lot of people think, oh, I should have a garden in my backyard. Yeah, who's going to really go out there and want to garden and just produce enough food for your family? It's a good idea, and it's great to have a plan B, especially if some of these food shortages that are being projected actually happen. But what if you could go out and buy a, a chunk of land, a vacant lot, like you know, a lot of communities have a little cabana club or something, but instead make it a little community farm, and you and a bunch of other of your neighbors get together, you pool a bunch of money, you hire people to work it. Now you have the benefit of having a farm, quote-unquote, in your backyard, but you're not having to work it, and it's a productive farm, it's a productive asset, It's you're selling the food at the local farmer's market or consuming it right there in your own community. But if the food supply chain gets disrupted, now you've got a place to go, you've got a plan B. And our friend Simon Black, since forever, has always talked about the wisdom of having plan Bs and how are you, if you do it right, how are you really worse off for doing it? If you can turn something, a plan B, into a profitable investment, I almost feel like that's the secret sauce. And I think one of the keys to doing it, of course, as you mentioned earlier, is syndication, because that's where you put people together to do something everybody wants, but nobody can do on their own. We've got a show coming up with a gentleman who's putting together a syndication in agriculture. We have a couple of other friends that are doing this on different levels. I remember talking to Mike Dillard, and he said, yeah, we have to be prepared to have about 20 people at our ranch because, you know, her family and my family and our or at all the folks that are going to come, they aren't preparing Chris Martinson always talks about you don't want to just be prepared for yourself, but you and your neighbors because they probably aren't. So it's a lot to get your mind around. If that whole concept sounds interesting, you could learn more about it by sending an email to resiliency at realestateguysradio.com. Resiliency at realestateguysradio.com. Or come out to the Secrets of Successful Syndication. Uh, you'll meet a lot of folks there that are doing these kinds of things. And more importantly than that, 
At this time of year, we've got this clean slate and the, all this worry and wonder in the world. Start thinking about what is your plan? What are you going to do to create a world worth inheriting for your kids and grandkids? And real estate can serve a basic part to that. It's not doom and gloom. It's just looking ahead to take advantage of the change that's coming our way. Big thanks to Steve Forbes, Doug Casey, and Dr. Mark Skousen. Until next week, go out and make some equity happen. This episode of the Real Estate Guys Radio Show is brought to you by Paradigm Life. Powerful cash management strategies using life insurance. Learn more at beyourbank.com. Mid-South Home Buyers, low-cost, turnkey cash flow properties in Memphis, Tennessee. Corporate Direct, asset protection strategies for real estate investors from attorney and rich dad advisor Garrett Sutton. Find these and other great companies under the Resources tab at realestateguysradio.com. To learn how you can expose your product or service to the Real Estate Guys audience, call 888-489-7723, extension 4. That's 888-489-7723, extension 4. Or use the feedback page at realestateguysradio.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next week right here on the Real Estate Guys Radio Show.